Canterbury, good morning to you. Grenada and the rest of the world. And season's greetings, my dear friends, on a beautiful, beautiful Monday morning here in the Spice Isle. Christmas Eve. Season's greetings. You know, uh, when I get through here this morning, I have to uh, run into town, and I have mixed feelings about going into town. One, yeah, I'll be happy to see a lot of activity down there this morning. But at the same time, I sort of dread the thought of the madhouse that it's likely to be on the streets of St. George today. Anyhow, thank you very much for joining us for today's edition of uh, Good Day Grenada. We are happy to be alive, very thankful. I know that it's a festive season and a lot of people are planning to have a great time over the next couple of days. But this morning we're going to begin with a pretty sad story that's about what's happening out there in Indonesia. Let's take a look at the rundown. Right now, uh, just uh, within the last four hours or so, the BBC announced that there is currently the fear of another tsunami in Indonesia. I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, in just a wee bit. We're also going to take a look at some of the good deeds being done by the female officers of the Royal Grenada Police Force. And uh, we have the national report for you, of course. And uh, <laughs> there's, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this on the weekend. Uh, in a way, it's, it's not funny. It's serious stuff. You're talking about a government falling in a country, huh? You probably heard by now that uh, the Guyanese government fell boot up on the weekend. But the reason why I'm chuckling is because um, for those of you who may not have seen it, there was a lot of pandemonium, if you will, in the House as uh, that vote was taken, the no confidence vote. And uh, it's just hilarious to look at the reaction of some people as this whole thing unfolded. I'm going to show you, towards the end of the program this morning, I'm going to show you uh, some video, a video, of uh, what went on while that vote um, was taking place. And I'm also going to show you a clip with a gentleman uh, who obviously has a heck of a lot of intestinal fortitude. The man who actually caused this all to happen. You know, the vote hinged on one person. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he made the decision, even though he's a member of the government, he voted. <laughs> after, after the no-confidence vote, he was uh, interviewed by the media and I'm also going to show you uh, at least a part of that interview. This man has guts. Guts. I understand that he's since fled the country. Not surprised. Anyway. Um, so uh, that's your rundown on this uh, Monday morning under beautiful sunny skies out here today. So... Uh, Without much ado, well, let me say hi to uh, the folks out there on uh, on uh, Facebook already this morning. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. I see that T.F. Richards is there saying good morning to his brothers and sisters. I didn't know your mommy had all these boy child and boy girl. <laughs> nice to see you, T.F. Margaret is saying good morning, everyone. Season's greetings. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa to you all. Margaret, I'm finding out some things about you I didn't know, girl. Lori Bridgman is saying good morning, George, and to all my Grenadian family, Merry Christmas, and she's asking us to stay positive. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Lori. You know, as we end this year, we've, we've been through a lot of challenges this year, and uh, don't think that there aren't going to be any more coming your way in the coming year. But like Lori says, we have to remain positive. I was telling somebody here yesterday that, you know, every, uh, 
At the end of every year, we talk about, oh, I wish you a bright and prosperous new year. I'm yet to see one of those materialize. I've made it through 67 of those years, okay? But I'll tell you, um, I try not to get my hopes up and look for something out of this world to happen in the new year. How many times have you made resolutions and broken them? Hmm? They're good until New Year's Day ends and then out the window. So, for those of you who, uh, like me, just leave yourself in God's hands and do the best you can, great. But for those of you who are probably sitting around right now thinking, hmm, what's my New Year's resolution going to be for 2019? Don't lose too much sleep over it. All right? Who else is there? Anthea. Hello, Anthea, on a Monday morning. Anthea is with us this morning. She's out there in Decatur, Georgia. Anthea, hope that it's warmed up a little bit for you guys. Veronica Sandy is sending uh, Merry Christmas greetings to everyone. And uh, she's also asking us to be safe. Yesterday morning, for those of you who were with us, you probably heard me rattle off uh, a release from the Royal Grenada Police Force urging Grenadians to be safe. Not only on the roads, you know, but in so many other things you do. Please, enjoy the holiday. Enjoy the holiday. Just don't go overboard. And that's, that's where it happens, you know. There's nothing wrong with having a good time. Absolutely nothing. But some people just go to the extreme. Try not to be one of those, okay? Who else is there? Let me see here. Uh, T.F. Richard says, uh, let me see, T.F. says, George, I don't know if it was really coming from the conscience of the parliamentarian in Guyana, but if that is so, then we definitely need more politicians of that fortitude instead of being a yes sir. Kudos to him. And by the way, he has the backing of his constituents. You know, TF, I'm really glad that you brought that up, TF, because uh, you probably didn't see the interview that was done by the media with him after the vote. That man specified on more than one occasion that he was voting conscience. Conscience, yes, he said that. And he admitted, as you will see in just a few minutes, he admitted that in the past, he too, like so many of the politicians, had voted along a party line. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? My friends, wait until I bring up that video clip. That's why. This is so powerful. What you're about to see in a half an hour or so is so powerful. That's why I decided to run the clip. It makes you stop and think. And that's the reason why I said at the top of the program, this man has what in local parlance we call intestinal fortitude. Okay. Who else is here this morning so far? Um, George Mason is saying, good morning, pilgrims. Hey, 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 George Mason. That's my line. Pilgrims, good to see you, George. And he says, Merry Christmas to all. Keep on keeping on. Yaman. We're going to do our best. We got our hands full. We have a lot to do in 2019. So rather than just uh, making New Year's resolutions, I'm going to eat less sugar, I'm going to eat less salt, I'm actually going to start exercising, uh, what else, what else, what else? I'm going to make a lot of money, you know, instead of all that stuff. Um, let's just put our, put our minds to the grind and say, hey, what can I do as an individual? 
I'm not asking you to change the world, but as an individual, just a little bit, just a little bit. Helping an old lady across the street. Hey, that's one way, changing the world. Okay. Dimly Dowden. Hello, Dimly. I chuckle every time I see that name. Anyhow, Dimly, nice to see you there this morning. Anyhow, folks, let's get into uh, some serious stuff. Coastal residents near Indonesia's Anak Krakatau volcano have been warned to keep away from beaches amid fears it could trigger a new tsunami. On Saturday, giant waves crashed into coastal towns on the islands of Sumatra and Java, killing at least 281 people and injuring 1,016. It is thought that volcanic activity set off undersea landslides, which in turn generated the killer waves, which we saw and heard so much about. Anak Krakatau, that's a volcano, erupted again on Sunday, spruing ash and smoke. Video shot from a charter plane captured the magnitude of the volcanic event in the Sunda Strait between Sumatra and Java. Now, uh, after we get through here this morning, you might want to go to uh, one of the news sites like mm, the BBC or CNN or whoever, and uh, you can see actual footage of the devastation. It's kind of sad kind of sad. So let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers as we go through uh, the uh, holiday season. Speaking about thoughts and prayers, uh, overnight I heard that uh, a friend of mine passed away. Actually, uh, we went to Presentation Brothers College together. A gentleman by the name of Ian Dabrio. Ian uh, is uh, somebody a lot of people know. He's affiliated with the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association. So also the manager, or at least was, of uh, the Wavecrest Apartments down at Grand Dance. Well, Ian's been battling cancer for several months now. And uh, late last night, he uh, passed on. He's been uh, hospitalized in Toronto for quite a little while now. So to his family and friends, I extend my sincere condolences, and I do pray that he's in a better place today, okay? Now that we've gotten uh, a lot of that out of the way, let's turn to something a little, 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 little bit more cheerful. The women officers of the Royal Grenada Police Force swapped their police caps for Santa hats to deliver Christmas hampers to needy persons and the elderly on Thursday, this past Thursday, the uh, 20th, I think it was. The caravan of women police officers made its way from police headquarters along the East Coast via St. David, delivering 12 hampers in the Eastern Division and proceeding on to the Western Division where another 14 hampers were delivered. But it was a bittersweet memory for the officers upon arrival at one of their recipients who had only minutes earlier passed away. Sad. The hamper distribution, which is into its 13th year, brought tears of joy to the many recipients who received approximately 100,000 US dollars and 100 dollars, excuse me, US in donated foodstuff and personal items made possible through the donations of corporate and private citizens here in Grenada and also in uh, New York. 
Apart from the Christmas hampers, many children were treated with goodies along the way. Distribution for the Central Division and Carrier Coup will be done at a future date. Well, it's not going to be it's not going to be Christmas hampers unless they're going to do it sometime today. Anyhow, what I'd like you to do right now is take a look at a very, very short video that I got of that hamper distribution. Here goes. Touching, touching, isn't it? You know, for many people out there watching, it's probably a small thing, a little hamper. But I can assure you that for the recipients, it's something that meant an awful lot, especially at this time of the year. Would be great, though, if uh, that sort of mood and generosity and caring lasted throughout the year and uh, not just at the holiday season. A lot of people, uh, I, I told somebody here just a couple of days ago, you know, they wanted to know, well, George, what are you doing to celebrate? What are you doing for Christmas? What are you doing for Christmas? Pilgrims, they celebrate Christmas every day. They said, uh, the person said to me, well, you know, Christmas is about Christ, isn't it? Christ. Yeah, totally agree, totally agree. And that's why I celebrate every day. I don't just think about him on uh, Christmas Day. We communicate every day. Okay, pilgrims. Let's take our first little break now. What time is it here? 19, he, 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 19 and a half minutes after 9 o'clock. Let's take our little break. We'll come back with a national report. Hubbard's bringing you Frigidaire Christmas chair. With the purchase of any Frigidaire fridge, freezer, stove, washer, or air conditioning unit, you get a free three-piece Frigidaire non-stick pot set. Come into our appliance department on the Carinage and build and supplies Grand Ants to get your trusted Frigidaire products and enhance your cooking this Christmas. Offer available while stocks last. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones, and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Co-op Bank and you.
With free island-wide delivery, Hubbard's building supplies and lumber departments continue to provide the best quality lumber, steel, tiles, plumbing materials, electrical, and general hardware supplies at competitive prices. We continually consult with builders, homeowners, and contractors to improve product range and services. Enjoy discounts where applicable, including the use of credit and debit cards. At Hubbard's building supplies, Grand Dance, and lumber department, Caranage, we offer quality service, affordable prices, giving you the convenient reliable free island-wide delivery call 440-2087 for all your home improvement and building solutions juve chocolates cocoa nibs and cocoa balls from diamond estate grenada are now available at amazon.com amazon.ca amazon.co.uk and grenadamarket.com try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates 75 percent dark and rich 100 percent pure cocoa and their 60 percent dark and sweet chocolate bars today amazon prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the usa canada and europe grenadamarket.com Come. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Go Bank and you. Government updates church leaders on pension reform negotiations and the industrial climate. Details to this story and more coming up in the National Report. Welcome back with the National Report for today, Friday, December 21st, 2018. I am Wendy Edmond with the details. Government has been actively engaging church leaders, allowing them an opportunity to share their views on the pension reform negotiations and the industrial climate. Following recent action taken by teachers and some public officers and the decision by the cabinet to withhold salaries for the days not worked. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell met with leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and on Thursday, a similar meeting was held with the leaders of several other denominations, including Anglican, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, and Pentecostal. Dr. Mitchell expressed that his government sees pension as a moral responsibility, but any payments made to public workers must not put the rest of the population at risk and must not jeopardize the future sustainable development of the country. At both meetings, concern was expressed for the well-being of the nation's students and the potential negative impact of the industrial action on them, not only now, but in the long term as well. Meanwhile, Minister for Education and Religious Affairs, Honorable Emily Peer, met this week with about 40 religious leaders representing different denominations. At Wednesday's seating of Parliament, Minister Peer said the religious leaders have committed to give more support to the education sector, and she disclosed a commitment by her ministry to hold regular meetings with the church leaders. What, for me, stands out about this meeting is the consensus that these leaders are committing that they are going to give even more support um, to our education sector as it relates to their involvement and support for schools throughout Grenada, Caracou, and Haiti Martinic. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in addition to that, we would have agreed at that meeting and gave a commitment from the ministry that we are going to meet with those leaders on a quarterly basis. And there was general consensus to that as well because we understand the value of our religious leaders and uh, the fact that we are a religious community, their role in the development of our education system, 
their role in development of our communities. And we want to continue to build upon that. In other news, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has met with the investigations team at the Office of the Integrity Commission. Dr. Mitchell, as the minister responsible for the Marketing and National Importing Board, was called to meet with the investigations team as part of the information gathering process. Prior to being called for an interview, Dr. Mitchell had indicated his willingness to meet with investigators looking into the operations of the MNIB. Several other persons are expected to meet with the investigation team at the Office of the Integrity Commission. These interviews will continue after the Christmas season. In September, the Office of the Integrity Commission announced that uh, it had commenced an investigation into the current and the past affairs of the MNIB. This came against the backdrop of allegations about the inappropriate use of funds. This is The National Report. More news after the break. Christmas from the Government Information Service, Channel 22. And finally, in the National Report, creating a livelihood and developing the skills of persons in the arts and craft industry. That was one of the main objectives of the skills training program organized by the Ministry of Tourism and Civil Aviation through assistance from its Cuban counterparts. The program provided a three-month training in wood and straw hat crafting held at the St. Mark's Secondary School and the National Stadium. Participants were given an opportunity to become entrepreneurs and enhance their skills in the craft, which will allow for the creation of a higher quality of products for the market. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, Honorable Dr. Clarice Modes Cohen says the training will assist in the tourism development in Grenada. This is a long and a short story. The long part of it is that for the better part of one year, over a year, um, on two occasions when I visited Cuba, um, I, I spoke with the authorities, the relevant authorities, to ask for some training in craft. But the story goes even a little more beyond that, because having been trained in Cuba myself, I am well aware of the high technical competencies that they have in various craft, and um, many of them have, have forced me to leave a dollar or two behind when I go, because the quality of the craft and the prices, two things that are very important when you're producing craft and you're selling craft, um, they have both of them. And so having had uh, a first-hand um, appreciation of what they did, I engaged uh, the authorities, and um, they responded very swiftly to that. And, and we were the ones who were slower, working to get the logistics in place to have them to come. Um, one of the criteria that we used was that whatever materials that they use to, to teach must come, must be available locally. The minister says while there were some challenges, the objective of the program was achieved. We did have our challenges. We couldn't find wood, and when we found wood, it wasn't dried, and, and we couldn't find the right means for cut, and there were a lot of challenges. And um, the straw, we had to go all the way up to Subiz and Marquis, and of course, Joaquin <coughs> had to work with an unusual type of material. But the thing is, everyone was an overcomer. And that was one of the things that we shared very early. Every obstacle, has, every problem has a solution. We agreed on that from day one. Because when they came, I, I noticed a little bit that, you know, they were discouraged. Well, we didn't have that, we didn't have the right machines, we're not used to that machine, what do we do? And so many obstacles. Sharing some of the experiences of the participants also gave a commitment to pass on their knowledge to others. We worked hard and we did it. The class was very educational and worthwhile. The 
participants, and I enjoyed our time spent in class with our tutor, Hohe. <laughs> he showed us love, patience, and also he was kind-hearted to us during the lessons that was taught to us. The class was based on using raw material, for example, wood. He taught us how to construct and build ornaments, fruit bowls, leaves, and many other crafts. The class was very innovative and worthwhile. Reminding you of our top story for today, Friday, December 21st, 2018. Government updates church leaders on pension reform negotiations and the industrial climate. On behalf of all of us in the newsroom, I am Wendy Edmund. Okay, there you have it. Uh, and I just want to remind you that the uh, national report you just heard was actually Friday's national report. Okay. We've now been joined on Facebook by Beverly Mitchell. Hello, Beverly, and season's greetings to you. Margaret, curious Margaret here, says, What is the purpose of the meeting with the churches? Good question, Max. Good question. You know, I, I watched that piece, and I was hoping that when the minister spoke, she would have been giving us something a little bit more concrete, a sort of a takeaway. I don't know. I don't know, Margaret. I can't answer your question. Uh, Lori Bridgman says, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. And I'm thinking, how can we, the people, who can afford to do something. Make it bigger and better for those who cannot afford it in this time of year. So true, Lori, so true. And I'll tell you one thing, gotta be honest. You know, what you saw there was just one act, if you will. You know, this is what the female police officers of the RGPF did. But you know something, Lori? There are a lot of other people out there, a lot, doing just as much, and maybe even more. But unfortunately, you really don't hear that much about them. They are what I, uh, or whom I refer to as the unsung heroes of our country. And this is one of my goals. This is one of my goals, you know. I really want Grenada to see the unsung heroes in our country. And they're all over the place, not just here in St. George's, all over the place. But to do that, what, what's holding me back is that I don't have transportation, okay? And I really need to get around. And I'm praying, this is one of my prayers, that uh, in the new year, I will have a vehicle because I want Grenada to see a lot more of the good in this country. Do you know how many people how many people know about some of the villages in this place? Would you believe that on this island there are people who have never been to Karyapu? Hmm? Yeah. 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 These are the things people need to see. Pity Martinique, Pity Martinique. They feel so left out. Towards that end, let me tell you, I had a meeting here this past week with somebody from Pity Martinique. And you know that uh, every weekday morning, well, used to be every weekday morning, but uh, Beverly had to leave us because she has gotten her hands totally filled with another project that she's working on, so she doesn't join us on Mondays anymore. But on Tuesdays, uh, Ray Roberts joins us and talks about, I call it Ray Roberts at large, talks about anything that comes to mind. 
on Wednesday, we used to have somebody from uh, Kariuku. And uh, that fizzled off. That person just evaporated into thin air. On Thursdays, we have Alan Bajinski. Um, uh, we used to have, uh, from the diaspora, Flying Turkey, Cecil Belfont, on Fridays. And um, Cecil, Cecil misses you guys, let me tell you this. But unfortunately, when we shifted the program from 7 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock, or to 9 o'clock, that didn't pan out too well for him because he has to work. He works in New York. And uh, it was not convenient for him to join us at 9 o'clock. But I've been trying to get somebody to represent Pity Martinique because I really want the people of Pity Martinique to have a voice. And guess what? By God's grace, I believe that I have now found someone. But that's probably not going to start until sometime in January. Unfortunately, the person uh, leaves here, I think the first week in January, she's going to Florida for a little while. And I said to her, well, that doesn't really matter because look at Alan, for example. On, uh, on Thursday mornings, when you see Alan bunging away here, he's not in the studio with me. Alan is using his little uh, hmm, mobile device. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So technology has made that possible. And so I look forward to you folks extending an enormous welcome to our friend when she join us, joins us sometime in January. Back here now to do, 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 do Facebook. Let's see who's there on Facebook now. Yvonne Joseph has joined us. Yvonne says, season's greetings, George and friends. Well, season's greetings to you too, Yvonne. Thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, uh huh. Ah, who's that? I see here we also have been joined by Veronica Sandy. I have never been to either of those islands, says Veronica Sandy. Well, Veronica, I tell you what, the next time we go to Kariku or Pity Martinique to do the Sunday program, we certainly hope that you will uh, join us. Maybe we should put together a side and jump on the Osprey or what's the other one, the Dolly Sea, and go on up there and do the program. That'd be a terrific idea. Okay, tell you what. I think I've kept you in enough suspense. I told you earlier on this morning that I want to bring a chuckle to your face. And I want to repeat, there's nothing to laugh about when a government falls, okay? But in just a minute, I'm going to play um, some video of what went on when that no-confidence vote was held in Guyana this past week, okay? And as you watch it, I want you to watch the expressions on the faces of some of these people. And in addition to that, listen, listen to the desperation that was expressed. But before we get to that, we're going to take a little break here and then we'll come on back. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. 
With free island-wide delivery, Hubbard's building supplies and lumber departments continue to provide the best quality lumber, steel, tiles, plumbing materials, electrical, and general hardware supplies at competitive prices. We continually consult with builders, homeowners, and contractors to improve product range and services. Enjoy discounts where applicable, including the use of credit and debit cards. At Hubbard's building supplies, Grand Arms, and lumber department, Caronage, we offer quality service, affordable prices, giving you the convenient reliable free island-wide delivery call 440-2087 for all your home improvement and building solutions Grenadian General Insurance Company strength and stability Grenadian General Insurance Company tell your friends tell your family we cover household that's comprehensive motor and even fire too on Scott Street, St. George's. For more information, call 440-2434. Tell everybody. Why wish upon a star? Oh, I'm right. Tis better by far. Whatever you're wishing for this Christmas to give you no interest and no fuss. Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home. Treat your loved ones and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Go Bank and Do. Welcome home. Okay, folks, it's now, let's see here, 17 and a half minutes away from 10 o'clock. Now, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu has appealed for calm after the coalition government of President David Granger failed to defeat a motion of no confidence brought by it, by, brought against it by the main opposition People's Progressive Party, PPP. General Secretary Barat Jagdeo. And that was on Friday, by the way, of last week. Government-backed backbencher, okay, government backbencher, Sharandas Prasad voted with the opposition in ensuring the success as the motion in the 65-member National Assembly late on Friday. Prasad later said his conscience had been stiff or stifled long as he defended his decision to vote with the opposition and topple the three and a half year old coalition government. It was a moment of shock, pandemonium, confusion as the vote was taken. And I'd like to share with you a few of those moments this morning. Take a look and a listen. Mr. Rutherford? No. Mr. Rajkumar? No. Mr. Seeperson? Yes. Mr. Figueira? No. 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 Correct yourself. Correct it. No. No. Correct it now. No. No. Mr. Seeperson. No. No. Mr. Seeperson. No. No. Mr. Charandas Prasad. No. 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 You can vote again. No. 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 Yeah. Say no. Chandas. 
for a timeout of two minutes. What sort of thing is that? No. I remember the, there's no, no timeout on the vote. No. 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 Mr. Mr. Charandas Prasad, you call the name Mr. Charandas Prasad? That's how you normally call him, Mr. Seepers, huh? Well, let's go through the thing and deal with it. What? I have had my share of everything. I don't understand. What is going on here? I'll remember there is no timeout on a vote. A vote is taken to conclusion. Would, would um, Mr. Um, Isaacs? I would say take the vote from the beginning. Take it from the beginning. Um, for, you begin from okay. the beginning with the. Um, Shola, just a minute, please. Just a minute. Bring your. Bring your. Uh, all members, the clerk, I have directed the clerk to take the names of the opposition members from the beginning so there is of the, of the government members so that there is no including of the other one. hear what it says. Mr. Rajkumar? No. Mr. Charandas Basad? Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Pagera? Did I tell you? Would I ever lead you astray? Did you hear that lady in the background? Charandas? Char no! Oh, God! Absolute unbelief. Well, I told you, and you saw it for yourself. This happened on Friday of last week. Now, that was the funny part. 
I am now going to run with you. I told you earlier on this morning that there was a sort of impromptu press conference with Mr. Prasad after the no confidence vote. And uh, I want you to listen carefully to what this gentleman has to say because I believe he has been shooting straight from the heart. T.F. Richards, listen to what this man has to say. And as you do, tell me whether you have ever seen or ever hoped to see that sort of gumption in this country. Here we go. Charles, what could um, maybe justify your voting pattern tonight? What would have caused you to vote against your own government? Well, my government is AP and you and AFC. I am an AFC member and I'm extremely disappointed in the AFC team. My reason for voting in favor of the vote, the emotional no confidence, simply because I have no confidence in what the AFC team is. What would, what, what would they have done to cause you to think like that? Numerous things. Like? Numerous things. We, we are sitting in parliament as yes men to the APNU. And we are AFC. We have not blended with the APNU. The other parties have. We are not. It, it, the government is APNU AFC. We have not blended. Why are we doing everything they want to do? Like passing Prime Minister Hamilton Green's pension bill. That man is getting favors from the PNC, not from us. Why are we giving him taxpayers' money? And we voted for that. We are not opposing anything. We are not even saying no to anything. And that is what the problem is. I can't stand that. It's a time where, as Jessica Levy in the House of Commons in Great Britain said, there are times when you have to vote according to your conscience and not because of party affiliation. This is a conscience vote. And I'm not a PVP member. I'm not affiliated to the PVP. This is not because of the PPP. This is because my conscience is now clear. My life may go. You know what? I'll die a happy person and with a clear goddamn conscience. You weren't, co you, you weren't coerced by the PPP. I just want to get that clear. No. PPP didn't call you and tell me to the No, same. Dr. Jack Deo, well, I always say Mr. Jack Deo because he's been president for years. I can't call uh, Mr. David Granger. I can't call him David or Granger. He's still Mr. Granger for me. I have not spoken to that man about anything. I, he hardly says a hello to me even in Parliament. But did you express your concerns? Um, are there any specific concerns we have going forward? Well, with the threats that I'm getting here right now even. Walla Lawrence was sitting in the cafeteria and said, whoever crosses the floor, she will kill the person, throw them over the rail. What does that mean? You take her, her statement, my, I'm PNC, my friends are PNC, I will give work to PNC. And then what did Trotman do as leader? I wrote to him and said, we have to make a statement. What did Trotman do as leader of the AFC? He defended Walla Lawrence for having said, oh, but the minister was overwhelmed because of the loss of the local government election. And what did Walla Lawrence do? She apologized for having said something she should not have said. Trotman looks like he was just pissed on by Walla Lawrence. And I'm taking all of that as a member of the AFC because we have no say. This is the one time that I have a say and I said it according to my conscience. My friends, those of you who are AFC people, those of you who are APNU people, I have nothing against any of you. The AFC team has disappointed me terribly too. And I did not work so hard to put them in power just so that they can run around and live that, the good life and mess with the people. You destroy the lives of sugar workers in a village and a district that I live in. I can't live with that. And so if I die now because people may not be happy with what I've done, I will die a happy person. I'll have a clear conscience. I wrote to my son. I didn't tell him anything in detail. I simply said, be happy and be a good father. I've got two grandsons. I want to go see one of them who have not seen. Born November 23rd this year. I've seen the other one. That may not happen, but you know what? They will understand when they grow up. I'm not concerned right now about who thinks I'm a traitor, as they've called me. They've threatened me. You're a traitor. You're a this. You're a sellout. Um, you should die. I heard that. Well, I will die. It's not my ambition to live forever. I don't know if any one of you or any one of them has a dream that they will live forever. It's not mine. 
when it comes, I'm a Hindu, I believe in karma, it will unfold as it unfolds. What can I say? Yes, my friend. Um, the leader of the AFC moments ago told you that even minutes before, while you were the meeting downstairs, that you and my others had given the assurance that you would be voting against the motion. We were told to give the assurance. I said nothing. I was at a meeting of a team that I belonged to. Until then, I had no say. Still had no say. So you never gave an assurance? Then? No, I did not say yes to anything there. When you asked to say yes or no? When the vote came just now in the crowd, like a, a, a mass vote, I did not say no. I did not say no. So, sir, when would you say you made this decision that you were going to vote yes to this motion? Having listened to it today, I thought about it since last night. I did not even sleep well last night because I knew it was going to be a tough thing. Look, the PPP people tell me to stay in chambers. I'm coming out with a couple of friends of mine. I don't know what's going to happen outside there. What happens, happens. Mr. Prasad, the, yes, the AFC says the AFC says may be expelled. Your reaction? I could resign and save him the trouble expelling. You know that I will not be coming back to Parliament as a member of the AFC. They will expel me, obviously. If not, you'll see me here on the 3rd of December, and I'll, uh, 3rd of January 2019, and I'll tender my resignation. Or I may mail it into the Speaker before the holidays are over. I am not keen on being a parliamentarian. I'm a lawyer. And those who know me will know that I'm a successful lawyer. I don't sell my soul. I sold my conscience for three and a half years in this parliament to the detriment of my own job that has now come to an end what can i say they're not going to be pleased they're definitely not pleased because they have lost the power that they were holding on to i did not do it to reduce their power i did it to clear my conscience my friends whatever it is i must say this the minister of public security has offered me security police protection to get out of here. I don't know that I will need it. I don't know that I do not need it. But I thank him very much for having made me that offer as Minister of Public Security, perhaps as a friend also. But what can I do? I have to go home. I can't live here. I'm sorry, no. Um, this is the end of my political career, if it was a career. I did not plan on getting into politics. But I did it because at that time, I couldn't stand what I saw the PPP was doing. A lot of them were getting rich, real rich. So and we are not doing anything differently. Uh, I'm ruling out joining any political party from here on in. Being a candidate. Or being a candidate, period. And you will see that my word is not just hot air. I will not be a candidate for any party. Were you paid to vote? Paid to vote when? Today. They paid me for traveling, yes. And I only received the money. The parliament office paid me for that. No one wanted to your vote? No, my friend. I can't be bought. <laughs> I can't be bought. Because members of the public are asking. No, no, that's right. I think I owe the public an apology or a proper explanation and that's, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying now. That is why I'm saying. I wrote a letter. I, 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 I asked my secretary to mail it a little later on, supposing that I don't get out of here tonight and I can't hold that letter again. It will be mailed. So it says the same thing I'm saying now. So what I'm saying here is what I believe in my heart. And for all intents and purposes, you know, I don't know, I don't know that these people would have changed, that they would have done anything to benefit the people. Having put so many sugar workers out of the, their livelihood, having declared that PNC people will get work. What are you saying to AFC? It's not about being black or Indian in this country. It's about being PNC as far as Volda Lawrence is concerned. And again, we go back to that, but I already said enough on that. My friends, we all are doing a job. This is a contradiction in your positions because only last week I believe you voted in favor of the passing of the appropriations. Of what? Passing the budget essentially. Again, I go according to party lines. But you broke the lines. Tonight, I go, I, tonight, this is the only time, my friend, I'm going to say this one more time. This is the only time in my three and a half year as a parliamentarian that I voted according to my conscience. All the other votes I took was according to party lines. Because I am a, an AFC man, a government man, I voted in favor of anything that the government wanted.
much to my dislike on some occasions, but it was a party vote, a vote according to party lines. Tonight was conscience. I have a conscience. It is now clear. What do you mean by great thing, sir? My great thing? Yes. I, I don't know if I'll get out of parliament buildings. Providing you do, would you be my great thing? I, I thought of living at Letem. It's a very Canada? peaceful area. Canada? Let them Rupinuni what about Canada? to retire. I don't know that I will go to live in Canada at all. But that I will wait. As time unfolds, we'll see how that goes. Folks, having watched that, do you now understand why I found it absolutely necessary to play that for you? Think back to some of the words he used. I voted my conscience. He even had the gall to admit that in the past he had voted along party lines and for the first time voted his conscience. Another key line which really, really caught my attention. I cannot be bought. You know, there's a note here on uh, Facebook from uh, T.F. Richards. T.F. says, if I could see that politician, I could kiss his feet. Yeah, T.F., a lot of people feel that way. I don't know about the politics of Guyana, but for somebody to stand that firmly and his belief, the man has to be admired, has to be admired. I understand that he's now left the country, don't know where he's gone, don't know what its future holds, but I do pray that God will bless him. Very, very powerful stuff, and think, think, think. If you would ever see that gall, that gumption in our parliament. Okay, let's see here. Um, Fitzroy Adams. Hey, Fitz, you're kind of late this morning, but better late than never. He's saying good morning, George. Season's greetings to you and your family. May the good Lord bless you and guide you to see many more years to come. Thank you so much from uh, Fitzroy out there in New York. Thank you so much I need those blessings for Troy. Thank you so much, my friend. Don't know you, but thank you so much. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Uh, Glenn Andrew Mark is saying good morning and sending you folks season's greetings. <laughs> There's a cute little note here. Oh, Lori Bridgman, uh, earlier on this morning, I mentioned, you know, that there's so much more that I'd love to be bringing to you folks out there. But that I didn't have uh, didn't have wheels, if you will. Lori says, George, I will have to set up a GoFundMe for your car. You definitely deserve it. Good luck, Lori. Good luck, girl. If you did, the Lord would shower blessings on you like you wouldn't believe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. You know, th things happen. Things happen. Nothing's impossible without God. And let me see. Anything else here on Facebook before Georgie Porgy takes off? Maybe go feed his face a little bit, see what we have in the refrigerator in there this morning. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Well, I guess, I guess not. And by the way, I've totally ignored the people on the, uh, the other platforms there this morning. I see that they're in, the, well, they're in the United States, they're in England and uh, Germany as well, and uh, around the Caribbean. Thank you so much, folks. On that note, Georgie Porgy. Oh, by the way, there's a cruise ship in town today, the Costa Magica. She's in port. She, uh, she will be here until 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, her capacity, 3,000... 470 people. Now, if even only half of those came off the ship, can you imagine what downtown's going to be like? Boy, don't even try going to the banks. On that note, pilgrims, I'm going to ask that you have a safe 
blessed and enjoyable holiday season. Don't overdo it with the partying. I'm not saying don't party, please. I'm not saying that. Just don't overdo it. Have a good time. Be nice to your family. I'm going to be off for the next couple of days. Um, uh, but I will be back, by God's grace, on Thursday, I think it is. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, allow me to have a couple of days off. I would really appreciate that. And uh, we will see you again, 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 again on uh, Thursday morning. So, God bless you.